as per this software, they're only saying there's 112 facilities, probably substantially more, just not logged. Uh, 112 is a lot. 112 is a lot. I agree. Because like, as an example, what I'm going to try to ignore is like, okay, prime self-storage, prime storage, no way on planet earth are we getting this deal. Prime is a you know multi-billion dollar organization. You can see things like if you go to owner, I don't know why it doesn't have it here, but you'll see that like they own like $4 billion worth of property. Like the, it'll tell you in the owner section here. So that's not what we're looking for. We're going to continue doing this where we're going to filter that all out. So we go to owner, an individual person that includes a phone number. Let's just say they only have two properties in their portfolio. We're down to five, maybe so, you know, mom and pop facilities locally. Okay, let's just fly through these, right? So, I mean, this one sold in 2020, probably not going to be highly likely we get it. This one sold in 2020 for $22 million. Probably not going to get it. I mean, this one seems interesting. Storage unlimited. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we can see Diana. We're just going to take a quick gander of what this looks like. Storage unlimited. So we see, I mean, it's a pretty facility. It's not it's like as mom nice and building. poppy. Yeah, this is not as mom and pop as I was kind of mentioning originally. All right. I mean, obviously this is a very nice facility. Odds of them selling is probably not super high. Um, but as an example, we could just give them a call and I, I don't really care just as an example. They also own $41 million of the real estate. I'm kind of looking for someone, someone who owns next to no real estate. And like, this is one of the only properties they have. And maybe just maybe we Yeah, can yeah, that would be the ideal clientele. I agree. Because these people are going to be a little bit more choosy about what they're doing and probably want a premium. Exactly. So then, all right, so here you go. This one looks a lot better, right? Route 6 self-storage, great. Here's some of the data. They own 9 million, which is not horrible, but let's see if I can get one of these people on the phone. So we see Colonial, and we're going to see if, uh, when was this facility purchased? 2016, Colonial Edgar LLC. So we're just going to try to get in contact. Let's see if we can do that. Because next step is essentially we look up the website and then we call the owner. Like we call the business itself. I'll put a little accent. Yeah, I was looking for Robert Smith, if possible. I was looking for uh, the uh, self-storage facility owner on Route 6. My name is Henry. I was just calling to see if you'd be at all open to hearing an offer on the building. Uh, I'm a local investor and looking to move some money for tax purposes. 908-216-6532. Thanks so much and have a fantastic day. All right, we'll mark that this is a possible phone number, not guaranteed. 774-237. See, what do we do is we do this in a dialer, so it's all automated. But Do you ever get calls back from those kind of messages? Sometimes, yeah. I mean, the cool thing, though, is that I like to be very direct. You know, it's like, so they only call me back if they're open. You know, it's like I'm getting 100 phone calls from people who have no interest. I totally get it. And I'm sorry. clearly not a right. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark this as red. Then we're going to look up Route 6 Storage. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So we're going to take this address. We're going to go into a new tab. We're going to go to Self Storage. We're going to go right here. And this is the number, 508. Great. So now we're going to call the... Business itself, Swansea. Yes. Good afternoon, Route Six Storage. Heather speaking. Hi, Heather. My name's Henry. How you doing? Good. Wonderful. I was calling you about uh the uh see if you had any available spaces in the uh, Route Six self storage building. Well, we have a few spaces, but they are um on hold for people. Okay. I wouldn't say immediately. Um, possibly in the future. Okay. I, do, do are you also the owner? No. Yeah. Oh. But I was also curious. I don't know if you'd consider selling the building because I actually own a few other facilities, but uh, I'm running out of storage for myself as well. You know, no, I mean, they're not local. They're not local. Well, he's, I don't know what you want to know. I can't, I can't give you his phone number. You can contact the... Uh, no, an email is fine. I mean, whatever you want to do. It's, uh, it's like 200, how many? 275 units here. Some of them are climate controlled. Some of them aren't. That's fine. Great. What was the best email to get in contact with him? To get in contact with him? Yeah. I just, whatever the best email is that I can send some information. That's, that is perfect, Heather. That is perfect. Okay. Go ahead. Our, our email address is... Great. So Heather, I'll send you an email with my info. Again, my name is Henry. You know, this way you can you can forward it along. I think if if I am not mistaken, his name was, uh, was Robert, correct? Or is that Bruce? Bruce. 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 So I'll send you an email. I'll just address it to Bruce, uh, and this way you can forward it along. Does that work for you? Uh, yeah. If he has any uh, ideas of selling, he's... I'd imagine if he did, it would be on the market. But, you know, look, I can at least send you some information, maybe an offer. He can review it, and if he's interested, he can take it. And if he's not interested, he can tell me to have a nice day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, look, Heather, I, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Bye now. So anyways, now we know it's Bruce, not Robert. We can try to figure out total square footage. So you zoom in on Google Maps. 
and then I can go. Let me do layers so I can actually see what buildings these are. All right. That's very cool. That's very cool. Because now what I'm gonna, I just want to make sure they're all actual. It looks like they're all part of the facility. I'll go back here, and then this is even cooler. You can go here, measure distance, and then I could measure the size of the facility. Right. So this building's seven thousand. Go over here, do it again, measure distance. So this is also almost 7,000. We're at 6,800 times 2, which is 1,600 times 2 is what? 12, 16, 13, 6. 13, 6 plus 3,000. 16, 6. I'll add the 200. We'll call it a, a 16, 8. We're at 16, 8. Next. Total. 44,000 feet total. Now we'll take out probably something like 1,000 feet, maybe 2,000 feet for the office. Let's go back. Let's Go back one more time. Okay, so now we're going to do two things. Number one, we're going to go to their website. So now we're going to go, what is this, Sunsea? Or Swansea, Swansea. Okay, so now Swansea, we're going to go, yeah. go um, Swansea MA self storage because I want to see everything lo local, right? So prime self storage is a great freaking predictor right we're going to click on this one we're going to go to the website and let's see what old prime is getting all right five by five ten by ten one for one 141 dollars in rent we typically will go off this number because the 10 by 10 is really easy because it basically you can just move two decimal points you can figure out the price per sure. square foot that they're getting right yeah so they're getting a dollar and 41 cents per square foot so let's just call it a dollar 40 for real quick math you get 44 thousand minus the two thousand square foot for the office call it forty two thousand forty two thousand okay. times 1.4 for per square foot that means they can get a gross income per month at fifty eight thousand eight hundred dollars times uh 12 months times 0.6 for a conservative expense ratio of 40%, we get 423,000 as the net income. Okay? okay. And then what we can do is- we And then you're assuming 100% occupancy? Well, the, the reason why I do the 0.6 is sort of saying five or 10% vacancy. Because you sort of either take 10% off this number or you take an extra five or 10% off the expenses. It's sort of like either one's fine. So 420 grand gross, if you want to take like 400 as a, you know, as a, as a quick conservative net net for, you know, for more vacancy, as an example, divide that into $400,000 into divide by 7%, which is a cap rate, 7% cap rate, which means that the future value of this building, future value is $5.7 million. Now it's like what we could probably sell it for once we bring it up to snuff. Right. You know, yep. bring it up to par. I then will multiply that by point, like, you know, in a perfect world, 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7, and see if we can get it for that range, like 0. 0.6, 3, 0. 0.4 million dollars. Right. So now I can go back to this facility as an example. I can go to sales and they in 2016 paid 1.1 million dollars. So I mean, maybe I can offer them two and a half or maybe three million bucks and maybe they'll be happy with it. The point is that because sometimes you go here and you go like, oh, well, this guy paid two million and I wanted to offer him two million. Like, I don't think he's going to take it. Mm -hmm. But if they paid 216, right? Let's see what they, let's see if they got any mortgages since then. See, like, there you go. This is, this is the thing, right? They got a, they got a mortgage in March of 2016. This is inaccurate because it's saying the debt that they have on this building. So uh, what did he do? Cash out? I, I honestly, it's kind of weird because the software is not perfect by any means, right? But it's saying that they got a $3.7 million loan in 2016. So they may have already paid, you know, if you took 3.7 plus 1.1, they may be paid $4.8 million for the facility. The point, you know, it's like, so it's sometimes hard to tell, you know, but I would still write up an offer for 4 million bucks and see what they say or three and a half million bucks and just, you know, not really care about what they say because it's about just getting offers out. So I have the email, I'll draft up a little, a little note, you know, and uh, I'll be like, Bruce, uh, my name is Henry Eisenstein. I am a- Interested? Yeah, and I was like a self-storage investor on the East Coast. I came across your facility as I have friends in the local area. I am interested in making an offer on the on the property to at least give you something to consider. I have attached said offer to this email. Would love to at least get a counter uh, from you if this number is not acceptable. Have a wonderful weekend. Yeah. So you're definitely opening it up for him to say, I can, you know, I can get more from this guy. Possibly. Yeah. Maybe, 
listen, I'm going to have to guy three and a half million dollars. If he says yes, I'm going to be thrilled. I mean, like, you know, <laughs> I doubt he's going to say yes. And I look forward to hearing from you. All of my contact information is below as well as on the letter of intent attached. And I'll send this with, I have this, uh, let's do three, five million, no commission. I'm gonna put down $25,000 deposit. Uh, inspections and review of estimates. What the fuck does that mean? Uh, someone was editing this uh, right, <laughs> upon environmental inspections and environmental, structural, and yeah, I don't even need to have that in structural because there's no mechanicals. And structural inspections contingent upon review of all financials, leases, and unit mixes. Save it as a PDF. I'll sign my name, call it done, adopt, save. And go here. Boom. Set. One and done. <laughs> nice. Sent. And that's really, I mean, that's the simplicity of it, right? And then we Love can it. go back and we can try all over, right? I mean, ideally, you know, we could look anywhere. So, I mean, that's essentially, the, and by the way, this is the game I play with every type of property, period, right? Like this is yeah. not, you know, whether you want to it's apply true. this to self-storage or any area, I mean. Uh, right. No, but that's a great set. That's the game. You know, we try to create as much efficiencies as possible, which is like, that's why we pull a large lead list. We put it into the dialer. We automate the offer process, you know, and try to make it a little bit easier. But again, this works for every type of asset class nationally.